All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Wayne's World Garage. It's Tuesday, and we'll put another video out, hopefully Wednesday or Thursday, after we get back from the sawmill. But first, we've got a little bit of troubleshooting to do. So last week, as you may recall, we uh, cut up some white oak logs, because I'm working on this pavilion project. We wanted some white oak rafters or headers, whatever you want to call them. So we cut some 2x12s and some 2x6s. And Doug, of course, does a great job, as always. But kind of interesting, if you look at some of this wood, um, it's not perfect, which means he's cutting cockeyed and it's at like 9.30 in the morning, so I don't believe it's because he's drinking yet. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's the pile of wood we got from last week. And actually it's pretty nice, very, very, very workable. There's no problems whatsoever at all. But some of them, if you look at them, like take a look at this two by six. We've got right here, we've got exactly two inches. And why does it go down to, we'll call it one and three quarter or six quarter, you know, six quarter, seven quarter, seven quarter. You know, the way woodworkers use it, they're not machinists. It's actually less than seven quarters. This one kind of the same thing. We start out at beautiful at two inches. Then we get down here, well, it's the same, it's two inches. It's eight quarter, eight quarter. No, it's a little bit less. Seven quarter, had the ruler run wrong. The whole thing's a little bit cockeyed. Um, my point is, now look at this one here. This is one of the two by 12s. Turn it upside down, probably harder to see. It's exactly eight quarter, exactly what the doctor called for. And down here, what do we got? It's less than um, seven quarter. Like, but that's kind of bizarre. And you can see how this is a little bit smaller here, a little bit bigger here. So some of them, they're kind of cockeyed a little bit. We're wondering if the bed that the uh, log is on is possibly moving some. And what I mean by that is, is the bed tilting a little bit towards the saw blade as the saw gets closer and clo as the log gets closer and closer to it. That would possibly cause this. So we've got an idea, and let me tell you about the idea. So I am sure many of you have seen these little cheap Chinese levels, which have a little magnetic base with them, and they're digital. And they actually work swimmingly well. You put it here, you hit the zero button, it shows zero degrees. You turn it 90 degrees, it shows 90 degrees. Uh, they work pretty darn well. So here it is, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so here's what the thought is anyway. We will take this little bad boy, and we will secure it to this piece of metal. And then I'll take a camera, and the camera we will secure to the metal. We'll run the camera. We'll check the level as we run the carriage back and forth, and we'll see if we get anything level or not level. And we'll see how that kind of works out. So the only issue we have here right now is that the, um, this little bad boy here has got some magnets in it, which kind of probably works pretty good in most cases. But riding this carriage down, uh, towards, towards a 56 inch saw blade with 100 horses behind it could potentially cause damage to the saw blade or my level. Either one we don't want, either way, I don't want it to happen. So I've got this nice sticky tape, double sided tape. Modelers use it, radio control airplane guys and radio control helicopter guys and boats and car guys. It works really well for holding things. Um, but I gotta clean this off a little bit first. So my thought is I'm gonna secure this level to this piece of metal. Take some more sticky side of tape, secure my GoPro here. Hopefully it'll be in focus. Turn that on, zero it, turn this on, run it. We'll have a video of what the carriage does as it goes down the sled. And you guys all thought I took the short bus to school. Well, I did, but oh, stop that. Okay, so I think the next thing to do is this is a little bit too long. So let's put this on a saw and make this thing a little bit shorter and then we'll get on with the program. All right, so the next step is to clean this thing off with some acetone because the steel is called HRPO. What? Hot rolled, pickled and oiled. Uh, so there's oil on it, that's why it doesn't rust out. So it's not, it's a very inexpensive steel, but look at all the dirt that comes off it. And sticky sided tape, meaning my GoPro and my level would end up in a saw blade if we didn't clean it carefully. So. Still dirty. Two or three times. Now it's looking good. Boy, is that clean. Nice and clean. So, here's the plan here, Stan. We've got my double-sided tape. Cut a little bit. We'll put some in the bottom of here and see how she works. So, let's try it out. 
and we very effectively cleaned the bottom of this piece of steel. Nice steel, actually. Let's see how that works. It's got to be better than these silly magnets that were on here. I don't think it makes a difference where it's pointed to. goes flying off, well, no, it didn't work. I'm thinking about it, and I don't know if it's probably overkill, or whether I should put another hole here, here, or actually, don't have to do that, just put some tape around it. That would probably be a, a good idea. I'll put a tie wrap around it to hold it down. Man, am I smart, what a good idea. Okay, and then we'll just take the GoPro here. It's got these things here. They're meant to go on curved surfaces, surfaces but it'll go just peachy up here. Secure this, and we will be good as gold. So let's get cracking checking. Got a quarter inch drill in here. I punched it here so I have a rough idea where we want to go. These are the screws I use, they're great. Torx T25s, we'll go right into the log, and we'll be happy campers. So this hole's a little bit small, it's already here. But let's put this guy in. I do like these vice grip things, they work pretty well. But I've got enough grip to it, it should be good. One. Easy as pie, two holes with a nice little drill press, which is probably 60,000 years old. An old craftsman drill press. Old craftsman drill press. All right, well, here we go. What a brilliant idea. We will take these tie wraps, which probably aren't going to be long enough, and put them around my level. Actually, they will be long enough. Some things do go right. And now, Hopefully, we will minimize the possibility of the level ending up in the saw blade and see how that works out. All right, so now let me tighten this guy down a little bit more. With the wrong tools, of course. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. I like that a lot, actually. I'll put two on. I like it so much, I'll put two on. So now we can turn the level on. Turn the GoPro on. My God. I like it when a plan comes to fruition. Now, let's see if this thing is going to work, but I guess we're going to have to wait till Wednesday to find out. All right, so here's the plan, right, Doug? We got a 16 and a half foot red oak. We'll make fence boards out of it. We'll start making the cant, and then we'll put this little gizmo here on it with a level and another camera, and we'll see how it works, right? Who knows? What do you think? Al, give us some words of wisdom. plan until it fails. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? Who knows? Oh, I think it's a bargain. It's a bargain for somebody, exactly. All right. We do have a big log loaded up on here, and we did this on purpose because we want to get some weight on our carriage 
and see if it's changing the angle of the sled as it progresses along because it appears that the top of our wood is a little bit thinner than the bottom of wood when we cut these big pieces. Now when we cut a piece of uh, one by six, so we have a small cant, there's no issues whatsoever. But this is a pretty good sized tree here. It's 17 foot long, it's red oak, it's heavy. And what we wanna do is take our little test jig and see if the angle is changing very much. So that's what we're gonna do and let's see what goes on here with that. So I'm just going to let this little clip play through. It only goes for you know, a few more seconds just so the guys can take a look at this themselves and see how much it's really not moving. We thought it might be moving quite a bit actually, but really, if you look carefully, it doesn't seem to be moving and I think, um, I think our measurements will show that also. All right, so we weren't sure how this was going to work. We're still not sure how well it did work actually. So I set the uh, level to zero degrees when it was on top of our cant, and that's fine. And it moved around a little bit, but not much as the sled, you know, went downhill. It's not like it tipped five or six degrees, which to be, you know, to be off by an inch or three quarters of an inch like it is, it would have to tilt quite a few degrees, several degrees, not one degree. One degree, I think, is barely perceptible, and uh, that's probably normal. It's just kind of moving around, and if you look at the, the, uh, the gauge as we go down, as the carriage moves, she was it's you know less than a degree it's moving so i don't think there's an issue with this we did this several times and uh, we pretty much get the same results i'll just show you a couple more results just so the guys can watch it also might be boring so you might want to fast forward it All right, so the next brilliant idea is why don't we turn the um, gauge, the angle meter, angleometer, angleometer, I don't know what you want to call it, the level 90 degrees, okay, from where it's at now and see if the thing is tipping that direction a little bit, which didn't work for some reason because my GoPro quit on me again. It, it failed. Memory card, memory card error. I don't know how I get a memory card error, but we got a memory card error. But when I did change it um, direction, it was 90 degrees, it failed. So we'll try that again next week, but I believe our carriage is pretty solid actually. It just, it just looks like the, college, the carriage is very, very solid. What do we do next? I'm not sure. We talked about this at lunch. Maybe 
It's just the saw is getting hot. Maybe our, our bits are a little bit duller than they should be and need replacing. They're carbide. We've ground them several times. So I'm not quite sure, but I'm kind of running out of ideas here a little bit. Anybody got any brilliant ideas or brainiac ideas, please leave a comment and let us know. Okay, well here's a quick video of what we're doing here and what we're cutting. This is a cant. It's this red oak, 17 foot long. It's probably uh, 24 inches by about six and a half or seven inches, depending upon what we get. And what I did is um, I took a little video of us measuring it, which didn't work very well, but then I took some still photos of us measuring it. And as you can see, it's off by a reasonable amount. I don't know why. So that's what we're trying to think. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Possibly the blade is getting dull and we're having problems with that, but we've sharpened it several times. Maybe we need to replace the bits or the teeth, but I think the real word is the bits. So anybody got any brilliant ideas, please uh, leave a comment. Thank you. And thanks for watching this video. Um, if you like it, hit subscribe, leave a comment, and give it a thumbs up. Take care.